application is for 520 Jersey Avenue Associates, LLC, EU 2018 07 site plan and variance application for construction of the warehouse and located at 520 Avenue, Block 242, Lot 16.1, Zone District, High Chair. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members, professional staff, Attorney James Clark and the firm of Clark and Vignola for the applicant. We have before you what we feel is an absolute win-win application for both this city and the applicant. And I say so because what we are proposing to do is to eliminate a junkyard. Every municipality hates junkyards. Uh, they're necessary, but we try to eliminate them wherever we can. Uh, what we have in its place, okay, will be a 67,400 square foot restaurant which restaurant, a warehouse, which will include, that would be big, that, that would be a lot of food court, wouldn't it? Okay? Um, it will include a small amount of ancillary office space. Uh, as Mr. Bidnell pointed out in his report, uh, the applicant's proposal complies with all of the bulk standards in the I-2 industrial zone in which the property is located. Uh, we also have a conforming number of parking spaces, we do have three minor variances, all of which are related to landscaping. We don't have the width required for landscape buffer strip in one small corner, although we do have the required landscaping uh, to fit in there just uh, like we have for the rest of that parade. Uh, we also, as you heard in the last application, uh, we have issues with the number of trees and we'll make a contribution to the city uh, fund. And also this kind of use, as you noted last time, uh, doesn't really lend itself to foundation plantings on all sides of the structure of the warehouse. So we ask for that relief together with preliminary and final uh, site plan approval. Uh, we have two witnesses this evening. The first one is our architect, and uh, that will be followed by Scott Turner uh, from Menlo Engineering. Uh, there are some environmental issues at this site, and your staff, before they left, uh, asked that we provide an update as to what was going on. With the application, we did file certain environmental uh, reports, but I do have an update uh, in the form of a uh, proposal from Brilliant Environmental, which has been signed uh, by my client, and basically it provides for one of the first steps in the remediation process, which is the delineation uh, of the contamination. And I'd like to offer that up as Exhibit A1. We would agree as a voluntary condition of approval to continue all of the environmental remediation efforts. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes the opening remarks. And if you or any of the board members have any initial questions, we'll go to the first witness. Please, thank you. Okay. We'll call our architect. K-A-M-L-E-S-H, -E last name is Shah, S-H-A-H. -H. Can you spell your first name again? Kamlech, K-A-M-L-E-S-H. Okay. Uh, do you swear or affirm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. You may proceed. Licensed professional architect in the state of New Jersey? Yes, sir. And for how long? Uh, 20 years. Okay. Have you ever testified before this board? So, not this board but several other reports in uh, New Jersey. Okay, and have your credentials always been accepted? Yes, sir. All right. I would offer them up as an expert in the field of architecture. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Kalish, did you prepare the uh, floor plans and elevations that accompany this application? Uh, yes, it was done under my supervision. I didn't directly prepare one, but uh, it was done under my supervision. And you reviewed and approved? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you describe the dimensions of the proposed building as well as its height? Uh, the, the building is almost a square, 67,200 square feet. Uh, the height of the building is 39 feet to the parapet. Uh, there's a high bay, just architectural features that are about four feet above 39 feet. Again, it's a one-story flat roof structure. Uh, open warehouse space on the west side. There is a little small office space. Uh, a couple of bathrooms and a utility area couple of bathrooms in the back for the truck drivers. There are 14 bays, one drive-in bay uh, with a ramp, 
for the forklifts and or small trucks to come in. Uh, again, it's an open layout, one story flat roof building. Where will the mechanical equipment be located? The mechanical equipment will be located on the roof and most likely will be situated right in the middle of the footprint, which will be farther away from the perimeter. So it will not uh, hardly be viewed at all. I'm sorry. Will not hardly be viewed at all. That, that's correct. Building being 39 feet high, it probably would not be seen from the back. All right, and we have some handouts as well? Uh, yes, I have uh, about 20 prints of the plan, the elevations, and the three dimensional rendering. Ready? Yes. You can mark these. You can mark them either individually or collectively as they do. Mark them collectively as they do. elevations, please. The exhibit that you see in front of you is the uh, three-dimensional rendering, a colored rendering marked as A2. It's dated uh, August 15, 2018. Uh, it's a three-dimensional three rendering representing the west side, which is the entrance of the, the facility. Uh, the building, again, is constructed or will be constructed out of tilt-up concrete structure, which is an insulated structure, with high bay, clear windows to gain some natural light, uh, dual dome color on the facade, and a high uh, storefront at the entryway. There are a few windows in the front, uh, on the low level for more light, more light into the building. Is this the side that faces Jersey Ed? Uh, that's correct. Okay, great. <coughs> no, they're all collectively marked A2. Okay. Uh, the rear elevation, which represents 14 bays, truck bays, and a drive through ramp uh, truck bay, exterior egress doors, high bay uh, windows, again a flat roof, uh, same construction, it's going to be concrete all four sides. Again, a little band of dark accent color to break up the monotony of the, the facade. Same thing on the south side elevation, we, break, we broke up a little bit of the, the flat facade by raising a panel to give the aesthetical aspect of the, the facade as well. Uh, dual tone again, the gray and the dark gray. Uh, that's one side of the elevation. It's SK3 again, dated June 7 on the sheet. Sheet SK2 represents the front elevation and the north side elevation. Again, similar in the middle of the building, we've raised a panel to break up the the length of the building, same exact repetition of uh, the two colors, high windows, and in the front we have a storefront and some windows in the front as well to borrow some light. All right, we don't have any facade signage proposed yet, correct? Not as of yet. And that's because we don't have a tenant yet, correct? That's correct. All right. Uh, finally, uh, with respect to a freestanding sign, if we're fortunate enough to receive an approval, we will add that as a detail to your plans? That's correct. All right. That's all the questions I have of this witness, Mr. Chairman. He's available for yours. No questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we'll call Mr. Scott Turner. Scott 
Turner, T-U-R-N-E-R. -E right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please proceed. Thank you. Licensed engineer in the state of New Jersey? Yes, I am. Appeared before this board previously? I have. It's been a number of years, but I have been here before. And had your credentials, well, were you accepted back then? I was accepted back then. Now, say, have your credentials changed in any way since that time? No, they have not. I would offer him up again, Mr. Chairman. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did you or members of Menlo Engineering prepare the site plan drawings which accompanied this application? Yes, we did. Okay. All right. Please tell the board the location and the size of the property. Uh, sure, I'll mark A3 and exhibit A3 on the uh, easel. And it was an exhibit prepared by my office entitled 520 Jersey Avenue Cycling Exhibit, dated January 14, 2019. And it is a rendering of the proposed site plan with the landscaping shown, all of which are overlaid on top of a Google aerial map from uh, 2018. Uh, the property itself is block 242, lot 16.02. It contains approximately 4.48 acres. Uh, it is located on the uh, easterly side of Jersey Avenue, which is a, a county road along this frontage. Uh, it has approximately 343 feet of frontage, and the property has uh, around six, uh, 559 feet of depth. Uh, it's bounded by primarily commercial and industrial warehousing types uses. Uh, particularly on the other side of Jersey Avenue and on the northerly uh, boundary line. Uh, to the south, it were bounded by Van Dyke Avenue, which was a vacated right-of-way. Uh, it's currently used as a large parking lot for the use immediately uh, adjacent to that parking facility, which is the Social Security Administration building. And then to the east, which is uh, the rear property, is uh, bounded by the uh, uh, Amtrak uh, rail line. The property itself is currently an existing uh, junkyard facility. Uh, the remnants of that junkyard is uh, still uh, on site. Uh, there is some uh, various fencing uh, surrounding the property that's in various states of disrepair, uh, all of which will be removed and replaced if the board acts favorably on the application uh, with what you see here tonight. Okay, can you take the board through all of these site improvements that are proposed? Sure, yeah, and uh, once again, we are here seeking your approval for a 67,200 square foot uh, single building, a one-story building. Uh, that will be comprised of 65,400 square feet of warehouse space, and then 1,800 square feet of ancillary office area. Uh, we are proposing to access the site through Jersey Avenue by way of two new driveways. Uh, the most northerly driveway will be the primary access and the only access really to service the back of the, uh, the building and that will run towards the rear of the, of the property uh, which will gain access to the rear uh, truck dock loading spaces. We'll have 14 dock spaces and then a uh, drive-in ramp uh, space and then we have a dedicated uh, trash compactor area uh, in the rear as well immediately adjacent to that building. So trash will be handled uh, through that compactor. Uh, any recycling material that may occur on site will be handled internally and uh, taken out during uh, normal collection times. Uh, the rear of the property, uh, beyond the limits of the truck dock spaces, which will be uh, uh, addressed with uh, reinforced concrete, uh, will be handled with a heavy-duty paving section uh, that's been designed and dimensioned to allow for uh, WB-53 truck movements as well as WB-67, which is the larger tractor trailers. Uh, at the most southeasterly corner of the property, you'll see a uh, semi-circular uh, bulb, which is there and designed to accommodate those truck movements uh, and allow them to get back and uh, exit the site by way of that northerly driveway. Uh, the southerly driveway off of Jersey Avenue is uh, really the uh, driveway that would be used to uh, to uh, access the, the main uh, car parking lot, which is along the front of the building and between the front of the building and Jersey Avenue. We have 41 parking spaces proposed, two of which are ADA compliant spaces. And 41 spaces complies with the city zoning ordinances in terms of the amount of parking required for the intended use. Uh, we are proposing a, an above ground detention basin at the north uh, easterly uh, rear section of the, of the property. Uh, that will be an improvement over what's there today uh, that's been designed to comply with all the necessary requirements. 
uh, including water quality. We're going to provide a water quality structure on that detention basin prior to it discharging at the uh, northeast corner of the site, which is where the current discharge is located. The other utilities are available to the site. We have gas, water, electric, telephone, anything will be brought in by way of underground feeds, uh, primarily located on the uh, northerly side through that uh, most northerly uh, driveway, uh, and uh, they will be available uh, through uh, Jersey Avenue. Uh, we have a, uh, a lighting plan that we've also provided for review. Uh, they're all LED uh, energy efficient uh, lighting uh, fixtures. They'll be uh, square top fixtures that will be mounted at 27 and a half feet tall. Uh, we have a 0.5 foot candle minimum with a 1.3 foot candle average in the parking lots and the service driveways. And again, we believe they've been reviewed and determined to be compliant with their city standards. Uh, the uh, landscaping and buffering, we've done a significant <coughs> amount of landscaping proposed for the project. Uh, we have 125 new trees being uh, proposed to be installed, and that's a combination of uh, street trees, evergreen trees, flowering trees, and deciduous trees. We have 184 shrubs and 393 ground cover plantings. And we, we, we've taken the landscaping, of course, you know, installed it wherever we could throughout the entire site uh, with an emphasis along Jersey Avenue corridor uh, between the parking lot and uh, Jersey Ave and then of course around the perimeter of the parking and then around the detention basin as well. Uh, we do have some plantings on uh, the uh, two open sides of the new building, the northerly side of the building and the southerly side of the building. The other two sides of course are taken up with the uh, necessary uh, uh, loading spaces and or park parking and sidewalks. Um, speaking of sidewalks, we are proposing a sidewalk along the front of the building uh, to facilitate uh, getting into that main office space. And we are also proposing a five foot wide concrete sidewalk along Jersey Avenue in accordance with the county standards. Uh, there is a proposed electrical transformer pad uh, that's going to be proposed, or currently is proposed in the front of the building in a large landscaped island directly across from the southerly driveway. Uh, we provide <coughs> landscaping and screening as well as pollards to protect that uh, transformer. And it will be subject to review of utility companies, but we believe that's the best location uh, for that for that pad. There is room on the site for freestanding signs. We, we do, and we've proposed on the site plans a new freestanding sign to be compliant with your city standards. It'll be set back a minimum of 25 feet. It is located on the uh, southerly side of the southerly driveway uh, in between the, the row of parking there. Uh, we've got a detail, a very generic detail shown on, the, on our detail sheets, if you've seen that. Uh, we have a rough sign area uh, in between the two decorative brick pillars of about 24 square feet, uh, which is well under the, the permitted of 100 square feet uh, for, for standards. And we are uh, well under the 15 foot height. Uh, that's subject to change, but we certainly aren't looking for any deviation or variances from your sub here signing requirements. Anything else before we move to the staff reports? No, unless okay. I missed something, Jim. No, 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 we're good. All right, have you had an opportunity to review the big mail planning report dated January 8th? Okay. Yes, I have. All right, Mr. Chairman, as we customarily do, I'd like to move to paragraph 10, which is the plan review comments, which is always the guts of that report and between Mr. Turner and I will take you through it. Uh, the first letter A asks us to comply with uh, all other necessary governmental approvals and we will of course do that. Uh, item B uh, asks for testimony as to how the warehouse will operate. Uh, we do not have any tenants signed up yet so we cannot give you any particulars about how it will operate. Um, there is strong uh, interest in, in the space, as Mr. Paulus noted up and down the Jersey Avenue corridor, uh, but we simply at this point in time cannot tell you exactly how it's going to operate. Uh, but it is a rather small warehouse uh, in, in terms of some of the larger ones that we've seen at 67,200 square feet. With regard to item C, uh, we will make a contribution to the city trust fund to the extent that we have a deficiency in our trees, correct, Scott? Correct. Okay. Uh, item D asks us to tell you if we plan to park tractor trailers on the site outside of the rear base, which I suppose is in that bowl area, if you could point it out, please, Scott. Correct. Yeah, so we were asked when we were at the uh, TAC meeting to 
address any potential parking in that rear uh, bulb area, the turnaround area. What we've done is we've provided signage, no stopping, no standing, no parking, whatever, fire lane kind of thing. And it is it's signed around the entire bulb so that nobody is permitted to even park in that area. The only parking for, uh, for, uh, for uh, tractors or for trailers will be within those 14 bays themselves needed. The next item E is informational. It tells you that both the WB53 and WB67 vehicles can uh, safely and efficiently traverse through the site, and we're happy that the staff agrees with that. Uh, with regard to item F, looking for uh, testimony concerning the environmental conditions in history, and that I hopefully will have satisfied you with, with the Exhibit A1, which is a rather detailed proposal as to how they're going to delineate uh, the extent of the contamination. Uh, item G, uh, we will agree uh, to uh, screen uh, and protect with bollards the transformer, correct, Scott? Correct, yes. Okay. And uh, the applicant should clarify if it will be vacating the easement on the adjacent property. That's item H. Scott, can you point out where that easement is? Sure. It is located in the uh, north uh, westerly uh, corner of Jersey Avenue in our most northwestern corner of the property. It is located on block 242, lot 16.03, which is uh, shown on the upper portion of the, of the uh, rendering here. And it's, it's really parallel with uh, Jersey Avenue. I don't know exactly, I remember how wide it is, but it is a, an access easement for the benefit of this property. All right, the staff had requested that we vacate the easement, and the answer is we're agreeable to doing that uh, upon the issuance of the certificate of occupancy for our new building. Once we know we have a CO and that the site's going to operate correctly, we're happy to vacate the easement. Moving now to the Delaware and Raritan report, have you had an opportunity to review that? Yes, I have. All right. And that's dated January 11, 2019. Correct. Uh, are there any issues in that report that the applicant cannot handle? No, nothing in there that we can't address. All right. And uh, to the extent that we will be complying with it, Mr. Chairman, uh, if we get a, approval from you tonight, which we're hopeful for, we would make that voluntary condition of approval um, or approvals. Uh, I would ask Mr. Carley if there's anything that he would like us to specifically address with regard to his report. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, just going through my report, my, a second review, we had done a report in November, and uh, Mr. Turner's office had revised the plans in response to that in the, the TAC meeting. Uh, so this represents, uh, most of the report represents uh, cross-offs where they uh, they uh, met the comments previously. I just like uh, Mr. Turner just going through those comments that ask for testimony to just talk about how you anticipate solid waste collection and disposal will be uh, managed at the site. Yeah, that'll be through the trash compactor that's located in the uh, the truck dock area in the rear, uh, and then we'll have recycling handled internally, and it will be picked up. Uh, as needed during uh, normal uh, pickup days. And one of the things I sort of miss looking at the report right now, uh, my comment 13.8 is pretty standard comment of mine, just uh, uh, instructing the uh, applicant that they have to get other agency permits, et cetera, et cetera. I have an omission there. I don't think I have NJDOT highway access. Is that uh, on a state highway yet? It's not a state highway. Or is it just it's, short of it? It's just it's short of the highway. Okay. On the intersection of uh, Van Dyke Avenue in Jersey, to the okay. south is where the DOT jersey is. So okay, so you don't need it. And everything else in that report that's outstanding is okay. Correct. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Scott, we do have three variances, correct? Yes. All right. And uh, one of them concerns the buffer strip, and then we have trees and foundation planings, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, you are not a professional planner, correct? I am not. All right. However, you've been involved in hundreds of site plan applications over your career, correct? I have, yes. Okay. Do you have an opinion whether these variances can be granted without any substantial detriment to the public good? Yeah, I do. And uh, I uh, first, you know, illustrate which variances we're seeking and one is for a landscape buffer strip along Jersey Avenue. A 10 foot minimum strip is required uh, and we have 10 feet for the most part with the exception of when you get up towards the northerly service driveway. Uh, we have a 7.3 foot minimum uh, uh, proposed and it gets better as you head towards the south. Uh, I will tell you though the landscaping that we're proposing along that buffer strip uh, even though the area is a little narrower, is no different than what we're proposing in the 10-foot area that we have. 
Uh, so, you know, in my opinion, uh, that landscape item and the other ones are well are basically aesthetic uh, matters and it really had no detrimental impact in terms of the design. It didn't have to reduce the amount of landscaping in that area. Uh, the second one was for foundation plantings and again, you know, given the fact that this is a warehouse building, it doesn't necessarily lend itself uh, for uh, foundation plantings around all four sides uh, given the intended use. So we did provide landscaping on the two open sides that we, we, we could do that. And the uh, tree planting requirements, which is the last one which we talked about, we are uh, 54 trees short in terms of how many we can plant on site. Uh, and that's just basically, uh, you know, based on a space restriction, we really can't fit any more on the property without jeopardizing the health of the trees. So we do agree, the applicant agrees to contribute to the city tree fund. Uh, so, uh, you know, my opinion is that, uh, you know, there's really uh, no substantial detriment, there's no compromise of safety uh, in terms of the uh, granting of those variances by this board. Chairman, that concludes his direct testimony. If he's available for your questions. Just a minute, Mr. Chair. If I may, just a quick, I uh, might have missed it. Um, was, there, was there testimony on um, any soil contamination on the site from the junkyard use? The, the answer is yes, Todd. Um, we had submitted with the application uh, a report. Uh, it was a phase one, and then you have, as exhibit A1 tonight, which is in front of you, that's the brilliant environmental oh, proposal that. for delineating the uh, extent of the environmental contamination. So the condition uh, that I would suggest would be that ultimately that the, the site be under the review and control of a licensed site oh, sorry, okay. professional who would either certify that the site is clean enough to be developed or maintain in perpetuity a uh, control of the site that would... That would be a regular uh, review of the environmental conditions to ensure that they're either being remediated or have been remediated. The remediation might be ongoing forever, so it's it's a, a continuous sort of process. So it's it's the LSRP certification that would be a condition of approval. And we would be happy to accept that as a voluntary condition. In terms of, uh, I don't know who would be the right person to answer this, but in terms of ensuring that this is only a, this is a warehouse facility, right? There's storage of materials. There's no manufacturing um, proposed. Just given that you don't have an a end user, just some sort of representation on um, end use and what zoning do we have in place that prohibits. So, Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, the parking requirement for a manufacturing use in the city is much more demanding than the parking requirement for a, a warehouse okay. sort of storage use. So, since the applicant doesn't have a tenant right now, when they do have a tenant and they submit a zoning uh, or tenant tenancy application, it's going to say the, the the precise user and the type okay. of use that's on it. If it turns out that it's going to be a manufacturing use, when we go back to review the application, we'll say, hey, this was approved for a warehouse out of one per one per employee, now you've got 10,000 square feet of manufacturing space, parking calculation might not work, you might have to come back. Good. Mr. Chairman, even beyond that, let's say it was a use that had less of a parking demand. If we're going to do something other than a warehouse use, we recognize we have to come back to you. All right? Uh, I don't know if there's any other questions of the witness. Even though this is a warehouse use, I'm sure it's consistent with the zoning. I mean, um, there's a residential area just to the I guess it's just to the north and on the other side of the road on Jersey Avenue. Is there any, is there any thought into how truck traffic is going to impact that area? Or I, I think Jersey Avenue is a pretty heavily uh, trafficked area with trucks now. Uh, I think sure. being, given the fact that it's a junkyard, I would suspect that this property already had some truck traffic already. Uh, I don't think, in my opinion, there's going to be any substantial uh, impact of that area, given the fact that you're a lot along Jersey Avenue, which is partially a state highway and a county roadway. Right. Is the expectation that trucks are going to, that exit and egress is going to be out, going out of New Brunswick rather than into the, uh, uh, into the city? I think the anticipation, in my opinion, I think would be that they would go out of New Brunswick heading towards the south. That my, that's my expectation. That would be the way trucks would be coming in and going out. That would be the expectation. Only because that would be the way to get in and out of the site. Yeah. 
it wouldn't make sense for them to traverse through city right. streets. So just, I don't think so either, but yeah. I'm just asking. No, it's, it's a good point. And, and the other thing that I'd like to add is that when you have a facility like this, you don't have peak time traffic. In other words, the trucks, okay, their trip generation is distributed fairly easily over the course of the entire day and not during a peak period. Well, what's the, do you have any expectation of the volume or no? No, but we only have 14 bays, so you're not looking at a tremendous amount of volume. I may, Mr. Chair, if you take a look at the Institute of Transportation Engineers idea, and you see that a bit here, uh, their, their expectation for traffic generation for a warehouse is uh, 0.47 trips for every 1,000 square foot of warehouse. You have 67,000 square foot of warehouse here for the sake of that. So on the peak hour from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., you could expect 31 trips going in or out of the day. And that would be a mix of uh, uh, passenger vehicles and trucks. Uh, so that would be the peak hour trips. To put that in context of what you see on Jersey Avenue now, uh, the OTM, the Miskovic report we talked about, uh, that showed that uh, there's about 15,500 average daily trips on Jersey Avenue per place. And the peak hour is 1,865. Uh, so, in context of what you see on Jersey Avenue now, that's a, you know, that's something for the board to weigh in one of those 31 trips in the context of the 1,865 trips. It's a significant substantial. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I just want to supplement what Scott uh, testified to with regard to the variances. We think that uh, from a legal perspective, the amount of relief that we are requesting is nominal. Uh, we don't believe that granting these variances will have any detriment to the public good. Only to have his own plan. And basically, when you look at the overall benefits of this project, the elimination of a junkyard, uh, a very modern and very attractive uh, new use, uh, the landscape improvements, the aesthetic improvements, we think that you can conclude that the benefits substantially outweigh any detriment. Uh, that concludes our direct case. Any public comment? Charles Cranville. Uh, K-R-A-T-O-V-I-L. Do you swear to what the plan is? Swear to what the is? Yeah. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Happy New Year, everybody. A uh, uh, couple of questions. Uh, it was an interesting presentation. I learned a lot. Uh, so, um, first of all, I'd like to hear a little more about the contamination and remediation and what's in that report. Uh, you know, for instance, what, are, what contaminants are, are present, if that's known? I'm not uh, an LSRP. You certainly uh, can have the opportunity to take a look at the Exhibit A1. Okay. okay. To some, de some degree, at least from a planning board's perspective, that's not our jurisdiction. But we do, we, as a condition of this approval, we're ensuring, I think, the applicant has represented that they will comply with all the DEP standards and requirements for for that segregation. Correct. Mr. Chairman, also surprising that energy DEP would be permitted construction activities to occur or development activities to occur if there's remediation or if there's remedial plan that's in place with going contrary to that plan. Okay. So it's not, not clear from this what, what the contaminants are. Does it anybody know from the, the uh, applicant? Just curious what type of contamination they're going to throw. Soil contamination, but what? Not a uh, it's, it's soil only. There's no evidence of groundwater contamination. That's the extent of my knowledge. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I learned today that I guess it's, uh, NJ91 Jersey Avenue starts at Van Dyke Avenue, and is south is the state jurisdiction. And what jurisdiction is it uh, north of that? Is it county or city? County. County. Okay. Um, I, I am a little concerned about the uh, this intersection here, Van Dyke Avenue. Um, I'm not sure what the I, I'm not sure where 
the movements have been playing out for the trucks. But you know, this is already a, a unsignalized intersection, correct, Van Dyke in Jersey? <coughs> right. Right. So it's unsignalized. It's it's uh, uh, an area where there's just not that many roads, so the roads fill up a lot because of, there's, there's demand for it, and there's also a school, uh, McKinley School nearby, and so this intersection at certain times of day gets get, can be very uh, challenging uh, to navigate without a signal, and if you're having trucks also come here. And then it was alluded to that most of the trucks might be going south. So then they would have to be, I guess if they're coming from this way, they'd have to make a left at that already tricky intersection. Uh, I, I don't want anybody to get hurt or, or, or worse, um, you know, because of, of, you know, big trucks are making left turns at a, at a tricky intersection. Would the developer potentially be willing to uh, pay to signalize the intersection if the, the county and or the, the DOT wanted, wanted that to happen? The answer is there is no evidence that this signal, uh, this intersection needs to be signalized. We certainly have to get county approval, all right, and if the county wants it, then we will have to do it. But I don't think the warrants are there. The other thing I would point out is there are no school-aged children that will be traversing up and down Jersey Avenue to get to the McKinley School. They come from the residential area that is not anywhere near this intersection. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's some folks who go to the Kinley School and they might take buses in, but it should also be noted that there is, uh, at this very intersection, a uh, a warehouse owned by the prior applicant that's uh, been used on and off as a school for many years. Uh, and it's my understanding that the school district has plans to continue using that uh, that location right there uh, at this corner as a school. So it's conceivable that there may be some, you know, kids and parents and, and folks using that intersection. And um, I, I'm just, I'm just concerned about the, the the traffic safety. So I would, I would hope that, uh, you know, the, the the applicant and the city and the county and the state would work together to, to make sure that intersection is safe before we add even more truck traffic. Uh, to, to this dangerous intersection. And that's that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Board? Favorably, the following will be recommended as conditions of approval. Compliance with the terms of the DNR engineering report dated January 11, 2019. Submission of all necessary easements and across access agreements for review and approval by this board attorney and the city engineer prior to the filing of same. Payment of a site performance bond and amount reviewed and approved by the city engineer. Submission of site inspection escrow deposits and engineering inspection fees and an amount calculated pursuant to city ordinance. Payment of all water and sewer connection fees, issuance of a road opening permit from the city engineer if required, compliance with the terms of the Big Nell Planning Report dated January 8, 2018, contribution to the city's tree preservation trust fund and the amounts determined by the Technical Advisory Committee, planning review escrow funded for all anticipated post approval reviews, payment of all outstanding taxes and water or sewer fees, approval of the Middlesex County Planning Board. Approval or waiver of the DNR Canal Commission, Freehold Soil Conservation District approval, submission of a certification from a licensed site remediation professional relative to the site contamination. At what point in time, Todd? Uh, that would be a condition of uh, a resolution compliance. Well, as it was previously noted, this contamination may take decades to do. Just want to make sure it doesn't get in the way of getting a building permit or getting getting a CO. Right. So the, the process is, is not to provide the NFA anymore. It's not like you right. got no further action now. The LSRP essentially says yes, the the remediation program complies with the DEP requirements, and you can go ahead and build it. And the LSRP, that's a person, essentially says I will maintain review and control and certification of the site and monitor the conditions and calls for remediation wells, then they put the wells on and they do the monitoring and they check the water and that, that's... The problem with that approach is that we're not at the point in time where we know the extent 
of the contamination. A1 uh, is, is the initial part of the process to delineate the extent of it. I, I would rather have the representation that we will work continuously and diligently to move forward with the remediation process. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But ultimately, I'm going to need to get some sort of certification from the LSRP that says yes. it can be the, the, the plan that's been prepared right. by the LSRP will certify that the site can be remediated and you're going to carry out form. one shape or form or another, and you're going to carry yeah. out yeah. the implementation of that plan. Yeah. And if yeah. part, part B of that plan is continuous monitoring, that's something you have to agree to. And it could be by capping too. So it could yeah. be by capping, right? right. Thank you. So just to clarify, how are we going to memorialize what what's the client proposing that's different from what was stated? What's the what are you proposing in terms of the condition of the resolution compared to what was read? Todd, do you want to just read it again? What you think? Sure, it's submission of an LSRP certification relative to site contamination. So uh, we should clarify that. It, it, would, it would be a certification that the remediation plan meets the DEP requirements. And I would just add prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. <clears throat> and that includes the diligent pursuit of the remediation plan as approved? Yes. Expense, all on site utilities to be con constructed underground, all te temporary encroachments into the public right of way shall require city council approval, all construction staging shall be done on site unless an encroachment allowing into the public right of way is approved by the city council. Streets shall be kept clean of sediment and debris. The applicant shall cause the streets to be cleaned if directed to do so by the director of public works. Tracking pads shall be installed at all construction exits. Replacement, replacement of any damaged streets, curbs, and sidewalks as per the direction of the city engineer. And variances, uh, relief will be granted uh, for uh, site plan approval, tree replacement, parking lot screening, and foundation plantings were the three relief items, in addition to the site plan approval. Do you have a nomination? Move to approve the application with the conditions as stated. Second. Sam Ludwig? Yes. Manuel Castaneda? Yes. Bob Partica? Yes. John Pachelino? Yes. Dale Vickers? Yes. Felix Checo? Yes. Jeff Crump? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.